Welcome. Thank you for joining I'm not sure us. I recognize your description. But thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are so happy to have you here, and we're going to, going to start with a larger scale question. Okay. We're wondering if you can comment a bit on the changes that you've seen within classical music. You've been around for a few decades as an established uh, <laughs> you performer. Mean like I'm really and, old. Yes, no, but you've been <laughs> such an established performer and an educator. And can you comment on the changes, both positive and negative, that you've seen? I think it's, the profession is very different in many ways. Compared with when I was coming out of music college, I come at conservatoire. In a way, first sight, there are fewer opportunities. Music clubs, orchestras have folded. Uh, there aren't quite the same what do you call conventional performance opportunities. But on the other hand, for the proactive performer, I think there are more opportunities for them. You know yourselves. You've done this. You can promote yourselves. You can launch yourselves. Um, it's not all about just getting on a, a concert platform. And I think audiences are looking for more diverse presentations. I think if you just think you're going to put on a nice smart suit and appear on a concert platform, then you may find your engagements, unless you're a very, very top performer, are going to be relatively few and far between. For the top performer and the real international celebrity, yes, they're still there. But others are going to have to be flexible, and I think this is an entirely healthy thing. How do you think competitions fit into that schema? Oh, I think we all have a slight kind of love-hate relationship <laughs> with competitions. I mean, I know I'm here on a jury and I've done others. Um, it is, of course, this one particularly is a phenomenal way to launch a career. Um, but I'm delighted that certainly my own students, probably the biggest careers are ones who never did competitions. Yes. Benjamin Grosvenor, Evgeny Zubin, yeah. they, they didn't do it. Um, and I think if you can, that's a more natural way to just for your career to grow. But there's no doubt that this is the biggest way and the possible way to kickstart a competition. But apart from that, it's a great way for aspiring performers to cope with the challenge of getting huge amount of repertoire together, of coping with the stresses and of, of pacing themselves through an experience like this. Absolutely. Well, what sorts of qualities do you look for in an artist, both at a competition, mm -hmm. but also just at a concert stage? When well, you're I hope it's not different. I, mean, I think it's the mm -hmm. same. I listen to people here as I would if I was going to a concert. And I suppose my prime thing is, do I want to hear this person again? Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there are many who are highly, I'm not talking about this competition, but it happens here as elsewhere. There are so many pianists these days who are incredibly professional. And the overall level we hear is phenomenal. There are not so many who really perhaps speak to you with an individual voice and really communicate. And um, sometimes the one or two, I wish they did something, even if it was horrible, that was just different. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? It made you sit up and listen and say, wow, this person really has got a strong view, even if it's different from the one I would like. There are, it's, it's easy just to be ever so professional, ever so efficient, and maybe just a little bit bland. But I think the other thing, especially in a competition like this, is you're looking for someone who you think is going to represent the competition and be a really good, yeah, a good voice for the competition for the next years in, throughout the world, really, because the opportunities they're going to have, the reputation of Clyburn stands or falls by the quality of the of, of the winners and the concerts that they get. Right, and on a larger scale, a representative for classical piano around of the course, world. Yes. Yes. We have a question for you from a member of our online audience. His name is B. A. Smith One. Uh, and he was asked. B. A. C. H. Smith One. <laughs> <laughs> he was asking whether you reference the archived video replays on Medici's website, especially in the earlier rounds when competitors are separated by several days of music making. No. You hold okay. all thirty Absolutely performances in not. your head. Absolutely yeah. not. We're hearing people as a member of an audience. You go back and you hear an archive video, it would be different, it would be a different experience, mm -hmm. and you couldn't sit and listen to them all, so it would be totally unfair to listen to some of them. But no, I have absolutely no wish to do that whatsoever. If I can't retain a memory of the live performance, I shouldn't be here. Right, well, we agree, actually, yeah. because yeah. our impressions of what's happening here seem mm -hmm. to differ than what our webcast audience is experiencing, right. just really, in I terms of the acoustic that. and yeah. the energy. Yeah. Um, how does programming fit into your perception of an artist? Oh, there's no doubt that it does fit. And I think we want to feel here that someone has breadth of programming, mm -hmm. but at the same time, that they play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. yes. and so I was asked in an interview before the competition, what do I advise students about programming? I think the main thing I would say is be sincere to yourself. Mm -hmm. Never put something in a program because you think other people want to hear it. Put it in because it's something you really feel you want to play. But if you only want to play <laughs> Russian music, then that's not very good. <laughs> or if you only want to play 
Baroque music, that's not very good. So sure. obviously we're looking for a span of repertoire, an ability to cope, to be flexible, to adjust your playing, um, not just to have one kind of type of delivery. But yeah, I, sometimes we hear people and we occasionally think, why on earth have you programmed mm. that piece? Because yeah. yeah. clearly you have no affinity for it. Maybe you thought you ought to put it in. So this is a perception and also competition related question, but has your opinion on a pianist radically changed from the beginning to a later round? Like say someone made a very strong impression in the first round, either positive or negative, mm -hmm. and depending on how they've played later, you've well, sort of flipped. <laughs> it's, it's early days. We're still going to hear some of these, uh, these performers three more times. Yes. I think so far I have to say the ones who I thought were strongest in the first round um, are still the ones I think oh. are strongest in this round. I don't think anyone has shocked me by how suddenly they dipped. Sure. Or has excited me by how terrifically they advanced. Uh, Interesting. Okay. But it's, it's, it's a balancing act. Yeah, particularly maybe when you hear someone play a Mozart concerto, that's when they might either be better or less good than you expected. Right. Um, but no, fundamentally, I don't think I've changed my estimation, but yeah, the picking order might <laughs> go up and down a little bit. But <laughs> at this stage, I think the thing is we are still really above all looking for the six finalists who will bring this competition into the sure. highest profile um, the important thing is to get them there um, after the next two rounds then we, we have a, a real choice we've heard them six times yeah we ought to know who we want to uh, come in what place well unfortunately we're almost out of time but we wanted to ask you a series of very quick questions we want your instinctive gut reaction answers to <laughs> Christopher Elton you are in the hot seat for Clyburning questions <laughs> let's do this we're gonna start by asking you what is your desert island recording oh if it's a very short recording maybe Friedman playing the E-flat Chopin Nocturne oh one of, the, one of the best wow. okay you are an accomplished cellist what is your favorite cello concerto cello concerto um I think the Dvorak Okay. Beautiful piece. If you could play duo piano with any pianist, living or dead, who would it be? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be excited to play some with Marc Andre, actually. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent <laughs> choice. <laughs> yes. That's a great answer. I, I don't think he'd want to play with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which key signature are you at the moment? Well, I'm at the moment just being here the Janicek Sonata, so I'm really. E flat minor. Ooh, oh, love it. <laughs> All right, and the final question is what is your favorite museum in the world? Favorite museum? I think the frick in New York. Oh, oh. I think it's, we love that as well. it's been lovely having you here.